So I didn't really get much yoga done. I was too busy like watching the dogs, playing with the dogs, trying to get them to come over to me. There were a lot of people and you know, everybody was just so positive. There was so much like happy energy that was going around. And I think that made up for any yoga that I didn't end up getting done. Hi guys, and welcome to a Go Roughly pilgrimage. We're visiting people who are doing extraordinary activities with their dogs to celebrate that special bond that they form with them. The same bond that I formed with Moxie as I rode with her, my 75 pound German Shepherd. So in the last episode, we had to kind of split ways because co-pilot in waiting whimsy, I love saying that, <laughs> was a bit under the weather. My dad, who was caretaking her, was a bit under the weather. There was some puppy blues going on, maybe. Mm -hmm. And so I needed to go kind of come to the rescue. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> what I was doing. Um, meanwhile, you got to do something spectacular. I know. I was rescued by a Newf in the lake. Uh, it was great. Just gigantic Newfoundlander <laughs> dogs uh, rescuing you in the middle of the lake. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was a dream come true. I've always wanted a Newfoundlander, and I got to be surrounded by them. It was great. So in this episode, we've got a, sort of a variety of awesome things going on. Yeah. First off, we meet Sherry, who brings her dogs into the sort of therapy session or setting mm -hmm. to sort of help create that connection and, and, you and know, help work. people like work through whatever issues that they have. So it was, it's a really unique thing. So I, this is going to be one that you might not have heard before. Yeah. Next is puppy yoga. <laughs> yes, correct. I said puppy and yoga together in the same Yeah, sentence. I wasn't exactly sure how it was going to go. And when I actually was participating in it, it was it was better than what I expected. <laughs> it was spectacular. OK, it was phenomenal. And maybe not because of the pureness of the yoga, but just the. Yeah, the, the activity all the on its what own. of it all was just phenomenal. Yeah. From there, we go to the Westside German Shepherd Rescue, which yeah. is just tears at your heart. I mean, that is really... Yeah, they have a lot of dogs there that are looking for homes. Yeah. But we went there um, as part of the pilgrimage and also part of Kong Day, where we were able to donate a number of Kong items to the rescue. Yeah. And we end this episode with a visit down in San Diego to Sup with Pup. <laughs> Stand up paddle boarding with your dog. Yeah. Stick around. When you came and that other dog came and wanted to, they wanted to meet and you could see that Sonny really didn't want to have it. I think a lot of dog owners feel anxiety when it comes to meeting other dogs like it's expected that you have to meet that happened to us a lot with moxie she's a really attractive dog and a lot of times it happens sort of without asking right they just kind of come and it's like oh our friends our dogs can meet and become friends and yes. it's usually people who are really extroverted that don't understand boundaries with yes. humans as well. <laughs> i've always struggled to set boundaries and that had a negative implication on moxie so then i struggled with her as well and the yeah. other dog got a little bit triggered by it too yeah. and you were very clear with the woman that like no like my dog doesn't really want to meet your dog right now i don't want to make friends with anyone i don't want to do it and i don't want my dog to be friends with anyone and, yeah. and that's fine right yeah. and like there's no there's no shame there's no negativity towards it it's just right. understanding what your dog needs okay not entirely true mostly true clear boundaries are kind boundaries mm -hmm. and so people can't read your mind they don't know what you or your dog needs. they may not know what their own dog needs i'm not anti-social i'm not anti-friend i just don't want any of them really just being able to say hey you know i don't think right now is a great time for them to say hi it sounds easy it's really hard to do but the more you practice it the easier it becomes with moxie in her cockpit moxie going around and and just being an attractive dog that attracts a lot of attention and friends that we don't want Animal assisted play therapy. Play therapy. Tell me what that is exactly. Yeah, yeah, totally. So um, it's really using play as a therapy. It allows them to express themselves in a way that feels more comfortable and it doesn't feel awkward or forced or like you're being interviewed by a therapist. Because animals just are so powerful and they're able to reach clients in a different way than you can by yourself. For example, 
you might be like, hey, Sunny's a little uncertain about this situation. How can we help her be more confident with it? How can we help her go through this agility tunnel and feel confident about it? And then after they are empowered helping Sunny be more confident, they can think about, okay, so what's the situation where I maybe don't feel so confident? How can I feel more confident? What can I do to build up my confidence? Sherry talked about setting boundaries and it really spoke to me because I've always struggled to set boundaries. But I found that by setting boundaries for Moxie, it taught me how to set boundaries for myself. In the cushion of the K9 Moto cockpit, I've got something in here that's special for today. I have our yoga mats. So we were able to fit two quarter inch yoga mats in here. And this is really useful for today because we're about to do puppy yoga. If we hold on tight, we'll keep going till we reach new heights. Going further than we ever thought we could. We're on to something good. Last activity, we met with Sherry, who uses dogs in a therapy setting to help people work through their issues. She spoke about mindfulness and what better next activity to be doing than yoga, puppy yoga. So I'm actually Canadian. Oh, so uh, am I. Oh, no, I'm from Toronto. I'm from Ottawa. Uh, and I lived in Toronto cool. for a long time, uh, okay, but cool. I moved to LA for music. And okay. Cool. This is one of my passions, is teaching the puppy and goat yoga, which is just super fun. Puppy yoga in particular just has so much amazing energy. At the beginning of class, everybody's just kind of waking up on a Sunday morning, and by the end, they're just leaving full of energy and light, and it's just such a beautiful thing that <laughs> I get to do. I've kind of distilled it down to about five benefits for the human. Number one is laughter. Laughter, you know, happy hormones relief, endorphins, stress relief, anxiety relief. They always end up leaving higher. So that's what I would say is number one. Number two is what we call puppy assisted stretching. So as you're in your forward folds and they jump on your back, especially, you know, the ones that have a little more weight on them, like Nugget, they tend to push you a little bit deeper in your stretches. Three is puppy massage. So as they jump on you and they're like moving around, they, they work out those little knots. It feels really nice. It's, uh, it's relaxing. Number four would be core strengthening. So if we did some planks, sometimes we do this bird dog exercise and as they're jumping on you, um, your body will actually recruit some extra muscles to hold that extra weight. So it's a little bit of extra core strengthening than you know maybe you'd get at the gym. Mm -hmm. And then number five, which is probably one of my favorites, is just being in the present moment. So when there's all this adorable chaos going on around you, you, you can, can't help but just forget about everything that happened yesterday or what's coming up and be in the moment. And to get that benefit of being in nature and being with beautiful animals and, and such a nice community. All right, everybody, let's take our puppies of us now. Now for the puppies, it's great socialization for them. So as Julie gets in new puppies that may have not come from the best scenarios, it socializes them with her pack. She's able to rescue a lot more puppies. She's able to foster them for longer, get them vaccinated. And then sometimes when the puppies get adopted, they'll come back and play with their friends. So that's actually always really cute to see too, is they're like so excited when they see their friends again. So goat yoga is a very similar class, similar benefits. Um, right now we have three actually adorable baby goats. And again, it, it allows Michelle, she's our main goat wrangler, Michelle O'Carter. She is rescuing like goats like crazy yeah. and this allows her to do that. I've personally seen the goats be like so scared of humans where that very first day they're shaking and can you know need to stay on the outside. But by the second class, they're curious and they're coming in. And, and then we do kitten yoga with a shelter. I tried teaching that once and I was just so allergic. It wasn't oh, no. working. <laughs> but uh, kitten yoga and we actually tried doing pig yoga this year. Uh, One of our teachers, she has a miniature pig and the pig has a dog who's their bestie and so it's a smaller class. But um, that, that got interesting reviews too, like people found it very unique and interesting. <laughs> experience having these little guys just running all over 
Okay, so I didn't really get much yoga done. I was too busy like watching the dogs, playing with the dogs, trying to get them to come over to me. There were a lot of people and you know, everybody was just so positive. There was so much like happy energy that was going around. And I think that made up for any yoga that I didn't end up getting done. But having those dogs like climb on my back when I was in the plank position or when they, they came and they put the treats like right here when you're laying on your, on your back so that they can come and like lick off your neck. Ugh. It was perfect. It was like the perfect dose of puppy uh, love. We're here at the West Side German Shepherd Rescue and we're here for Kong Day. And the reason why we picked this rescue to do our directed Kong donation was because one of our supporters, Terrell, had gotten a dog here a year and a half ago and really recommended these guys so that they take really good care of the shepherds and they try and find homes for them. So we're here today to present the Kong donation for Kong Day, as well as our roughly donation of gear that we have for all of the pups and learn a little bit more about the rescue. Just a quick time out to tell you about a Go Roughly Pilgrimage post game show. So we've teamed up with Wolfgang Bakery and one of their experts is going to sit down with us and answer all of our questions and your questions that come up as we visit these extraordinary activities. So leave your comment down below. Yep. Email us at info at go roughly and we'll answer as many as we can. I've been a bit quiet and contemplative on the way down here as we braved the LA traffic because coming to a German Shepherd specific shelter, I mean, it's making me think of Moxie, right? And I'm just kind of anticipating seeing a lot of her face everywhere or at least her presence. This is Westside German Shepherd Rescue. We're a 501c3 and we've been around for about 22 years. We've saved about 17,000 German Shepherds. This is our own facility now. We have almost maybe 100 dogs here now. And we're over capacity, but we can't say no to, to the nice ones. <laughs> As part of a Go Roughly pilgrimage, we are donating a bunch of Roughly gear to the shelter. This is gonna be beds, collars, leashes, things that they can use here, as well as provide it to the people that are rescuing these dogs. Look at this, yes, no, you're not supposed to eat it. You're supposed to wear it. Yeah, look at that, look beautiful. Look at you, handsome dog. So uh, a lot of people in this financial situation now can't afford their homes. They're moving to apartments or moving out of state. So a lot of dogs are being surrendered to us. We just got a puppy in. Some people were living in a small apartment and their landlord told them, no, nope, you gotta get rid of this dog. So they brought him to us and we'll find her a good home. This is Adam, he's one of our new dog walkers. He is from a program called Paws for Life. Paws for Life selects certain inmates to work with uh, dogs. They spend 24 seven with the dogs and there's you know mutual benefit there. The dogs get trained and he's gotten great, great training through that program. And then he's been working with our dogs. You can see with Hendrix here, he's amazing. In just a couple of days, Hendrix is like super obedient, well trained, ready to go off to a home. What What does it feel like, or what's it gonna feel like when when he goes to a home? Uh, you know, like oh, you make this connection and. <laughs> well, it's all you know. I've been there before. <laughs> I don't like saying goodbyes, <laughs> so most of the time, you know, um, I'll go hide in the back. <laughs> the, I, um, not too long ago, I had a dog named uh, Toblerone, and the same thing happened to me. You know, and. I went to say goodbye to him when he was walking away. He turned around and gave me this look. Man, the tears came down. It was over. You know, he got me. So now it's like, you know, I train with them, but I, have a, I, I do know that they have to go somewhere eventually at the end of the day. But if they don't, then um, I just might adopt them myself. <laughs> why am I here? And why have I been here so long? <laughs> well, as a child, I was, uh, we had a German Shepherd. And, uh, you know, all kids are afraid of the dark at night but I had my big shepherd who slept with me and kept me safe at night. And so ever since then, I've had German Shepherds all my life. So um, you donated a bunch of Kongs to us, which we were really appreciative of. 
And so we had one dog who was particularly anxious and he would just spin around in his, his cage and he was just barking and barking. And so we put peanut butter in the Kong and froze him. So every day we gave him one, he just settled down. And as soon as he got his Kong, he was happy. And he got adopted right after that. Yeah. yeah. It hurts my heart a little bit being here at the German Shepherd Rescue, just because I don't have Moxie to go back home to. And all of these dogs, they, they look like her, they have the same characteristics, and I just see her in all of these dogs that are here. <laughs> Samantha Eastburn, born and raised in Arizona, growing up, going to lakes every summer. So I absolutely love being outside, loving on the water. I got on a paddleboard one day and they wanted to start giving out lessons. So I did like a two day course, became a certified instructor. And on one of my off days, I brought Jack and he loved it. So, I just thought I could take other people out with their dogs. So I started as like a meetup and just to see. One, two, three, four. I can't give her a Kong. Go get a frozen Kong. Okay, do something. What is wrong with them and what they need to do and be able to help deal with their issues. Confidence, anxiety, depression, um, stress. So my goal is really to become an animal assisted play therapy team with my dogs where they would come in with clients. It allowed me to set boundaries for myself. Wait, what's the word? It helped. Oh, our friends, our dogs can meet and become friends. I don't want any friends. I don't want to make friends. Okay, not entirely true, mostly true. What is this all about? Let's find out. We're here at the German, sh and I think it's very sort of similar how it can be with riding. Oh, sorry. 